Here we are again, looking at it this time uh, in oh, Sea Lion. So um, we're going to uh, run using the profiler, uh, and uh, we can see that up here, you know, next to our tools, we have uh, running it, we have debugging it, we have run it with code coverage, uh, and then there is profiling it, uh, and uh, the submenu doesn't have any other options on there. But that's that's what we're going to do. So we're going to run it uh, and uh, take a look what happens with the uh, profiler. So during the time when the program is running, um, it just gives you sort of a summary that says, yeah, it's profiling. It tells you the process ID here um, and then the current duration. As you might imagine, um, running it under the profiler is slower than it would be uh, in, under normal circumstances. Um, you know, here it's... Uh, here it's taking uh, somewhat longer, uh, actually a lot longer than it would normally, but that's okay. Uh, you can also interrupt it at any point uh, and say you want to get the partial results so far. That makes more sense if you are running you know, something that doesn't have a natural termination uh, and you just want to see, all right, uh, I've, I've run it for 10 minutes and I'd like to see what's happening um, for uh, the purposes of uh, you know a calculation we can afford to wait uh, to... You know, eventually uh, get the data that we are waiting for, uh, especially because we don't think it should take that long. So anyway, we will uh, continue to be patient. Uh, I can hear the uh, fans spinning, uh, and uh, you know the uh, CPU uh, is hard at work, according to Activity Monitor. That's for sure. Um, the, the Embody Parallel presently, as far as uh, my computer is concerned, taking one thousand two hundred percent CPU. So you know. Uh, that's uh, uh, it's working hard. So we'll just uh, just be patient, and hopefully it will be ready soon. I mean, one of those magic of editing things, I suppose you don't have to sit here and watch it the way that I do. I could always just uh, just cut it and uh, you know, remove the uh, waiting part of it if it goes on for too long, uh, and that would be okay. When I do this you know, in class in a live demo, however, people don't have that luxury. They have to sit and wait w with me the whole time. It doesn't get too awkward, I don't think. All right, um, so the run is complete. Uh, it did take a couple of minutes, um, and now data is being assembled uh, to actually put together our beautiful flame graph. Truly, it is it is beautiful, I assure you. Uh, and uh, again, looking at Activity Monitor, it looks like uh, th that's being done in one thread only. Uh, so it's uh, it's maxing out precisely one core. Uh, of my CPU because I can see it pegged at like 105 uh, for Sea Lion uh, and uh, yep hurry up and wait all right it was a long wait um, I through the power of editing have uh, made your wait less tedious uh, I mean it, it was only a couple of minutes but uh, you know you d you didn't need to sit there and, and see that. Um, all right. Whoa, boy. We got an interesting call graph here and everything. So, um, incidentally, because this is the parallel version, um, it's all threads are merged. So we could actually look at any individual thread if we wanted, or we could say all of them in the beginning. Um, we'll see uh, some details about how the profiler did its work. Uh, and, uh, well, we'll start off with the method list. So it tells you what uh, functions were called uh, and you know, how many samples were taken uh, in each of them. Uh, and we can see, of course, that, uh, you know, for uh, some of these... Uh, some of these tasks, uh, a lot of time really went there, uh, and for others, you know, not very much. You know, we only got one sample in you know, the join context call, what have you. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of them, however, happen with you know threads doing work, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, meaning, we're seeing what we expect to be seeing, right? We expect that uh, most of the time, 
uh, is spent running the you know, calculation of forces, uh, and then these are all the steps that Rayon has to take to actually do it. If I chose a different program where we didn't use the Rayon library to run it and it was just like the end body problem and everything, you would see like a more direct breakdown of this is the code that I wrote and this is, um, you know, the exact change that I made, but that's not actually a very realistic um, use case and you know, all likelihood you were probably using a library or something uh, to make it happen. Uh, and uh, we also get a nice call tree uh, and the call tree uh, will tell you, okay, what happens? Uh, so with you know, starting the program and we have all the uh, rust getting started, stuff uh, and then we call main uh, and main print some stuff initializes positions you know, calculates forces that sort of stuff uh, and we can look into it uh, you know initialize accelerations push things into a vector uh, and then uh, we're going to do our iterations uh, and keep going and going and going uh, and yeah, you can see exactly these are the steps where this function calls that function, calls another function, and so on. Uh, and uh, when we look here, uh, you know, where is our time going? Um, so in main, actually a significant amount of time, so this is probably our main thread, a uh, significant amount of time goes to printing the uh, various things, whether that is printing the... Um, Printing the initial positions or printing the final positions, uh, and then the rest of the time goes to initialize positions. And of that, actually, the slow step is generating the random numbers. So this would give you a hint if you wanted to improve this part of the program that you could speed it up by having a faster random number generator. Or use a different library or use a different strategy that works better. That's interesting. Not something you would necessarily think about or know without profiling it. I mean, I certainly didn't know that until I looked at this breakdown. Okay, uh, and then there are the worker threads, and the worker threads spend all their time doing, you know, the actual execution of the end body problem, and they'll actually tell you in, like, tremendous detail that they spend 100% of their time uh, actually doing the uh, closure, uh, and, uh, you know, actually uh, about half of that is uh, spent uh, in uh, running it here, uh, and the rest is spent in cleaning up when it's done. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, you know, when we take a job, uh, we do a job, and you know, there's some amount of time spent actually doing the work, uh, and you know, the um, worker thread uh, spends some of its time doing stuff, uh, and uh, a lot of the time cleaning up, yeah. which again, you might not uh, might not necessarily know. I mean, there is that coordination overhead. Uh, that we have talked about. We know that it's worth it. You know, this is certainly faster than the original n-body problem, um, but it is kind of interesting to think of it like that. I'll show you just for comparison the original n-body problem uh, as run uh, through flame graph in a bit, uh, which maybe makes it a little clearer what exactly is is happening. Uh, and then there is the actual flame graph part, which is what I was talking about earlier as, you know, being a nice visual representation, uh, and that you can see uh, functions uh, that call functions are stacked on top of each other. So when, you know, this function is called um, here, and then when it's done, we call it the next one, then those appear on the same line. Uh, and you can see the depth of the call graph based on which functions are getting called. Some of them, you know, have quite uh, significant depth in the call graph, uh, others less so, and you know, time moves from left to right in this diagram. Uh, and uh, if you generate with the command line, you can make it as an SVG, a scalable vector graphics, uh, and um, you can even browse them kind of like they're a web page. So you can click on things and you can see you know, what was what was the uh, you know, calls that were um, called by this function. So I can select one, double click on it, and then it gives you a zoomed in breakdown uh, to give you uh, some more details. I've also uh, generated some profiler data for the nBody bins program, although I cut down the number of points to be 10,000 because the 100,000 version was taking a really long time. Uh, and uh, it wouldn't have changed where the time is going. Uh, and so by looking at the methods list, I mean, we can see that a lot of time is spent in calculate forces as we would expect, and also the isAdjacent function, which also gives us uh, a pretty 
expected result. Uh, if we look at the call tree, I mean, you know, all of the time really goes into calculate forces. That's unsurprising. Um, and then when we break it down a little bit, um, you know, is adjacent is uh, expensive. It's taking about 36.8% of the time. Uh, the remainder is spent in you know, like iterating over the um, the array. So like swapping um, data is expensive, um, getting the index of the slice is expensive, uh, and then dereferencing uh, when we've got a, a piece of data uh, is also expensive. And it gives us a flame graph, which is perhaps a little more comprehensible. Uh, and then we can see that you know, when calculate forces, um, I mean, we can skip over all the stuff at the bottom here because that's um, just getting uh, getting things started in our uh, you know, start our program up, um, but we can look at is adjacent, and we can see is adjacent doesn't call anything. Uh, we can focus in on calculate forces, uh, and then we can see that in calculate forces, iteration over it, you know, reading and swapping and what have you is expensive. Uh, and you know, if, eventually, somewhere we will see, uh, you know, we actually do our uh, body body interaction. Uh, which uh, in, its, in itself isn't super expensive because you know, the actual math part of this isn't so hard. Um, the, uh, the difficult part, as you can see here, body-body interaction is really not that large. Uh, a component of it, the difficult part appears to be actually, you know, the overhead of uh, splitting everything up and uh, working with the slice and doing all of that. That suggests actually there is a distinct possibility of uh, significant improvement that could be made here uh, if we access data in a more efficient way. Uh, as you'll already recall from uh, looking over the source code, um, I found out uh, actually using this profiling method entirely that this is adjacent function was terrible and it sucked uh, by trying to do the adjacency vector uh, and we were spending tons of time with the slices themselves uh, trying to work out uh, creating the slice and accessing it and everything and eventually I said you know what um, I, if I do this as a giant if else condition it actually makes it faster uh, and so that case uh, profiling told us something very useful that helped us uh, well helped me anyway uh, to make a decision about what to do uh, and whether or not I should uh, change the code uh, and of course in this case yeah I, I absolutely should uh, because it made it uh, made it obvious what was wrong, and uh, the alternative solution, you know, is ugly in every sense of the word. You know, I don't think anybody likes seeing an you know if condition with this many branches. Um, yeah, I mean, you could replace it with a switch condition or a match condition, depending on your language. Um, but still, uh, I don't think anybody really likes it. Uh, it is unfortunately the um, the quickest way to make this happen. So that gives you uh, a bit of a contrast against the uh, previous version that we saw uh, where we did the n-body parallel program where it seems most of the time was going into libraries uh, and uh, made it a little less obvious what code we wrote and what we could do about it. Uh, and uh, this example uh, hopefully highlights to you a bit better the uh, benefits and the interesting parts about flame graphs. Uh, and as you zoom in, you can, of course, you know, see more and more uh, of where your time is going. Uh, and you can even find out you know, things like, you know, hey, this check of is null uh, is actually something that happens. So any, any of those niceties that you get in a language like Rust don't come for free, and you can actually see how much they cost you uh, in your profiler.